the loyal mongoose once there lived a farmer with his wife and a newborn child in a small village one evening when the farmer returned from the day's work he brought with him a tiny little mongoose dear this little mongoose will grow along with our child as his pet one day the farmer's wife wanted to go to the market so she put the child to sleep in the cradle she was half hearted to leave the child alone with the mongoose she told her husband to look after the child please keep an eye on our child soon she was back with a basket full of groceries and vegetables she found the mongoose sitting outside as if waiting for her she took one look at the mongoose and screamed oh my god blood you have killed my son with all her strength she struck the mongoose and went inside to see her child the child was still fast asleep on the floor below the cradle lay a snake torn and bleeding the lady realized what had happened she ran to the mongoose you killed the snake and saved my child <laughs> but the mongoose could not hear what she said she bent down in front of the dead mongoose and cried <laughs> moral don't be hasty in taking decisions the story that you saw right now wasn't it very interesting it was taken from panchatantra and panchatantra was written during the time of the guptas now do you know why the gupta period was called the golden age of india 200 years ago when the britishers came to india they wanted to learn more about the indian history so that they could rule us better so in one of the old manuscript they came to know about an empire which happened to be existed 1700 years old this was the gupta empire now from this manuscript we also get to know about the administration of the guptas so the guptas were headed by the king naturally but it was a decentralized administration meaning the power was divided so the king had a council of ministers which was the sachivas commander in chief the senapati and sandhi vigrahika who was the minister of foreign relations now the huge kingdom was divided into provinces or bhuktis now these provinces were governed by the uparikas and these uparikas were in turn assisted by the kumara adityas now these provinces were further divided into districts or the vishayas and was governed by the vishayapati now these vishayas were again divided into villages which were headed by the gramapati now this gramapati was much like the head of the panchayat who rules the village now you can see the extent of the gupta empire it covered a huge area it was also known as the golden age of india so it was culturally and economically very rich this was also a time when we had many learned men like kalidasa who is a very renowned poet we even had aryabhatta who was a well known scientist and shushruta who is also known as the father of surgery now you see that it was located on the bank of river ganga so agricultural production increased which meant that taxes were the main source of income for the king which meant that trading also increased as it was on the banks of the river now let us see how the trade flourished during the gupta empire so the regions under the rule of gupta empire included the port towns like the khambat baruch and sopara so what do you think is the importance of having port towns under the rule it meant that there was an increase in trading and which countries did the gupta empire trade with countries like ceylon sri lanka burma cambodia and java which is in indonesia so you see the gupta empire traded a lot which brought enormous wealth to the kingdom now the guptas were followers of hinduism and probably they worshiped 
Lord Shiva and Vishnu. So where do we learn this from? Here you can see we have the coins which shows the king on one side and Lord Vishnu on the other. Though the Guptas themselves were followers of Hinduism, but they were also tolerant to other religions like Buddhism and Jainism. So people in their kingdom used to follow other religions too. Now the Gupta age also saw huge discoveries in the field of science. One of the most famous scientists was Aryabhatta, who taught the world the use of zero as we know today. He even explained the scientific reason behind solar and the lunar eclipses accurately. So you see how science developed during the rule of the Guptas. Can you imagine doing maths without using zero? No. So you see how many important discoveries were made and science developed. Now can you tell me who taught the use of zero? Was it Kalidasa, Aryabhata or Samudra Gupta? Yes, it was Aryabhatta. Not only the field of science in general, but the Gupta age also saw major changes in the field of medicine. As you see, Dhanmantri, who was a noted physician, also happened to be one of the nine gems or Navratnas during the rule of the Guptas. Here, Shushruta, who is also known as the father of surgery, you can see that Shushruta is performing surgery on the eyes. So you see, nowadays surgeries are so important. Now can you trace it back from where it started? It started from the age of the Guptas. The Guptas were also very advanced in the field of metallurgy. The picture that you can see here is from the iron pillar at Mehroli. Now this is so old and still has not rusted even after so many years. So the pillar that we see today is standing from the time of the Guptas and is so old but still has not rusted which shows the exemplary of the craftsmen during the time of the Guptas that they excelled in the field of metallurgy too. Now, art and architecture also flourished during the time of the Guptas. What we can see here is the Dashavatara temple at Diogar. Another temple that we see is the Bhitargaon temple which is also an example of the exemplary architecture. Not only these, the Guptas were also well versed with the techniques of painting. The painting that you see here is from Ajanta near Aurangabad and Bag painting near Gwalior. Now these paintings mainly depicts the life of Buddha and what is more interesting is that these paintings retain their original color, original hue even after almost 1500 years. So you see they even excelled in the art of painting. Art of sculpting was also known to the Guptas. What you see here is the seated sculpture of Buddha at Sarnath. As you can see from the details, the Guptas were also excelling in the art of sculpting. Remember, we saw an interesting story at the beginning, the loyal mongoose and it was taken from the Panchatantra. Apart from Panchatantra, there were many other works of literature that developed during the age of Guptas. There were many famous plays like Mrichakatika which was written by Sudraka and Mudra Rakshasa which was written by Vishakadatta. So these plays also show how literature flourished during the time of the Guptas. Not only these, the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata which were earlier passed down orally finally got their written form during the time of the Guptas. We also see how Ashtadhyayi was written by Panini. Now what is this Ashtadhyayi? It is a book on Sanskrit grammar. And one of the Navratnas who was Amara Simha wrote 
Amara Kosha, which was a Sanskrit dictionary. So not only the plays, but we also see that during the Guptas, the grammar portions was also introduced in Sanskrit, like the books that we already saw. So we see how the language of Sanskrit was also flourishing. Let us have a quiz time now. Can you tell me what is the similarity between these three books? Let me give you a hint. It is related to this person. Yes, these are the books that were written by Kalidas. Now, who was Kalidas? He belonged to the court of Chandragupta II and was one of his Navratnas or the Nine Gems. He was a well-renowned poet and a writer. Now, here what you see is Raghu Vamsa, which is a poem. What you see here is Abhigyana Shakuntala, which is a play, a very well-known play. And the last that we have is Meghaduta, which is a poem that Kalidas wrote. In 427 CE, Kumara Gupta established the Nalanda University, the first international university of India. Now, Nalanda was taken from three different words, Na, Alam, Da, which meant no stopping of knowledge. They had 10,000 scholars from different parts of the world and they did not have to pay any fees. It was given by the kings. But Bakhtiar Khilji burned down the library of the university and he killed many Buddhist monks and decided to throw Buddhism out of India. Now, can you see this? What you see over here is the remains of the Nalanda University after it burned down. What we see today is only 10% of the original university. This signifies a great loss to education and knowledge. So you see how the Guptas were great patrons of education as well. The Nalanda University was the first international university in India and it was the biggest library in India which had lakhs of handwritten books. But Bakhtiar Khilji during his invasion of Bengal destroyed the Nalanda University in 1202 CE. He set the entire library on fire and the extent of the fire was so huge that it is said that the library kept on burning for three months. So as you already know that it was the biggest library in India which burned down to such an extent that what we find today is only 10% of what it originally was. Now you can obviously realize how much loss we have suffered because Bakhtiar Khilji destroyed the university. If it would have been there, India would have been culturally more rich. So you see how the Guptas excelled in almost every field like the field of science, metallurgy, medicine, art, literature, architecture. The Gupta period flourished economically and culturally as well. They even were great patrons of education and built the great Nalanda University which was very renowned all over the world and people from all over the world used to come here to study. So now you understand why the Gupta age was known as the golden age of India as it led to overall development in our country. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like Playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.